iGlobal Awards 2020. The iGlobal Awards celebrate ordinary people who are doing extraordinary things for the British Indian community and beyond. This next award is the iGlobal Legal Eagle Award of the Year. These legal powerhouses are some of the finest lawyers that the global Indian community have to offer. From using their legal skills to take on social issues to conquering the world of commercial law. These individuals lead the way in their field. Let's celebrate the contributions they've made to their profession. And the finalists are Mona Arshi. This hugely accomplished British Indian human rights lawyer and poet has been recognised for her work by being appointed as Honorary Professor of English and Law at the University of Liverpool. Mona is also a former winner of the prestigious Forward Prize for Poetry in 2015 for her debut collection of poems, Small Hands. J.S. Jotangia. J.S. Jotangia is a well-respected figure within both the legal and Indian communities. One of a handful of lawyers that are qualified as both a solicitor and barrister. He's best known for his work at the APPG for British Hindus, the Hindu Lawyers Association and his fight against caste legislation in the UK. Pranav Bhanot. Pranav Bhanot is a litigation solicitor at Mibi and Co Solicitors LLP and was shortlisted in 2019 as Junior Lawyer of the Year. He's also involved in the running of numerous UK India legal organisations, such as being a co founder of the India UK Legal Exchange Programme and UK Chair the India National Association of Legal Professionals. Shashna Krishna. Shashna Krishna is a partner at law firm McDormand Will and Emery. He is head of their energy infrastructure and climate change team in London and the deputy head of McDormand's India Group. Legal 500 has recognised him as a next generation lawyer for power and renewables in the London market. And the winner is Jayesh Jatangia. I caught up with them earlier to get their reaction to winning this award. Hello and welcome to the iGlobal Diwali Fest 2020 and what a privilege and pleasure it is to be with you here once again. Talking to some astute, wonderful people who've done great things for the community and for themselves and especially for charity as well. This particular gentleman who I'm talking to today has done tremendous work, lots of work over the years for charity and he's just reminded me in our previous conversation that uh, when there was the Gujarat uh, earthquake appeal how instrumental he was along with his team in raising funds for that uh, very very worthy and disastrous cause that uh, happened then. His name is Jayesh Jotangia and Jayesh joins us today right here on uh, the show and first of all Jayesh let me congratulate you on your wonderful achievement and the award that uh, you've received from iGlobal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tony. Uh, I, I, you're very worthy of it, I'm sure. Um, and first of all, very happy Diwali to you. Uh, you, Jayesh, are a very well-respected figure, um, both on the legal front and Indian communities as well. One of a handful of lawyers, may I say, that uh, are qualified as both a solicitor and barrister too. Uh, best known for your work at the uh, APPG for British Hindus, the Hindu Lawyers Association, and uh, your fight against caste legislation in the UK as well. So that's uh, that's quite a portfolio you've got under your belt there. Um, uh, what made you go into this particular field and champion such a worthy cause. Hi, Tony. Happy Diwali to you. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you. I feel quite privileged and overwhelmed, actually, by, uh, you know, being a recipient of this award, uh, especially by uh, such an acclaimed group as uh, iGlobal uh, and India Incorporated. So it's, it's, it's an honour, actually. Um, but, yeah, to answer, to answer your question, I, I mean, if you look at Indians uh, globally, uh, you know, we've got something in our DNA whereby we want to live peacefully in a harmonious way. We contribute to society, not just economically, but spiritually, uh, you know, we and we tend to get on and we assimilate into that society. So I think that the motivation behind getting, uh, you, you know, doing things 
with regards to defeating the caste legislation was all to do with um, getting everyone to understand and appreciate that um, you know, when it comes to breaking forces where you've got things like uh, caste or it's being utilized to, to break us as a community, I think that was the motivation. And you know, I encourage you know, everyone to, to sort of like support this cause to say that you know, caste is completely unwelcomed, it's, it's non-existent in, in, in this country. And we've got to learn to uh, you know, cooperate, uh, work together, contribute to society together and I think so that's that was the main motivation when you see a breaking force you want to do something about it and you want to make a stand for that. Josh when you talk about caste does that mean that you're talking about caste within the Asian community or are you talking about caste living in the UK in a British society or both? Yeah a, a, bit, a, bit, a bit of both really I mean we, we've you know, we, we've come such a long way whereby we, we're not recognised by caste, to, to be honest, here in this country. Um, you know, to, uh, being frank, I don't know what caste I belong to. I, you know, my ancestors and myself have probably changed professions, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's, it's irrelevant. Um, and when you put that word into legislation, it, 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 it's, it was going to divide us. And that we needed to have a stand against that. Um, certainly the caste situation has divided communities. It's, um, uh, it's very much a case of us and them. Um, what have you done to eliminate that and to bring about greater awareness and communication within the community? Well, you know, being, um, you know, part of the Secretariat team at the All Party Parliamentary Group for British Hindus and also Hindu Lawyers Association, we, and have been since this debate uh, started and probably since around about 2010 onwards and then 2013, it became more of a, uh, you know, more of a, a debate, so to speak, in, in, in Parliament. We, uh, you know, myself and, and, and the team um, with the uh, APPG, we, we tried to get our parliamentarians to understand and appreciate what you know what is the fabric of British Hindu society here is it caste is it prevalent and, and the answer to that question was no so it was a matter of educating uh, MPs and you know lawyers and you know um, people who basically have got influence in society to get them to understand and appreciate actually no caste is not non-existent it's not uh, an issue as far as we're concerned so as a community we don't want to be taking um, you know, five steps backwards when we've already come such a long way here and assimilated into a B British society. What have uh, been your achievements to date then so far? Well, yeah, we got, uh, so there was a, you know, there was a consultation that happened around about 2016 that we you wanted to happen. We wanted parliamentarians to actually do a proper consultation with the Hindu community to actually, um, so, they, so they've got their facts before they come to determining whether or not this particular word needs to come into legislation as a protected characteristic. And when, when, when that consultation happened and the answers started to, to, to come back as part of that consultation, lo and behold, caste was not an issue. So that's, that's, that's the impact. Yeah, it's, it's been very good. So the fact that you've brought about greater awareness about caste systems, uh, greater integration, if I may use the word, within the within our Asian community. You now have an award for doing that sort of work. How do you feel about that? Oh, God, as I said at the beginning, it's quite overwhelming, actually. You don't do this type of work to get awards. You know, um, you just basically, you, you, you get stuck in, you utilise your uh, expertise, you utilise your experience, and, and then basically things start to happen. Um, you know, we wanted to make this, uh, the awareness campaign for us was basically to say that is caste prevalent in the UK? It's not. Okay. And therefore the debate stops there. We don't want it in legislation. Don't, you know, don't, don't go forward with, with it. And that seems to have worked. So to get, to, to be recognised for that, is, I think is quite, it's, it's quite overwhelming, you know. Um, but I'll continue, irrespective of whether I get an award or not, I'm still going to continue to, to, to fight this particular cause. Bravo, good, good for you. And, uh, uh, and long may you survive doing it as well. It's, it's fantastic. Do you think we have 
inherited um, a caste prejudice from back home, from India, from Africa, from Pakistan. Do you think we've brought that with us into this country? No, no. My parents certainly did not bring that with them. I don't know about it. My kids certainly don't. And I'm pretty confident, very confident, indeed, that this is, you know, it's, it's just not an issue as far as we're concerned and my community is concerned. Now, you've been a long-term advocate on behalf of the Indian community. Is there more work yet to be done in this particular field? Yes, of course, there, there, is, there is more work to be done. And it's about engaging with our parliamentarians a bit more. Because I, you see, parliamentarians do not understand, sometimes I feel that, that they don't understand what, what the fabric of the Indian community is. You know, they need to be informed. They need to be a better, better informed with regards to our festivals, our beliefs, our practices, um, you know, and the different religions as well un underneath the, you know, Indian umbrella, so to speak. So there is more work to be done. It's not just about, it's not just about caste. There are other aspects to us as Indians. As I said, you know, previously, it's probably in our DNA to, uh, we've got, it's in our DNA to get on. It's in our DNA to live in a peaceful, harmonious way. And, and, and it, you know, we can contribute to society economically, we've got this particular aspect to, to contribute and show, um, you know, our host of society that um, this is how, th th these are our practices and we want to get on and we want to contribute massively. Well, you've done some tremendous work um, and uh, if people want to get involved and find out more about the work that you do for the community, with the community and organiz organizations that exist, to further enhance the cause of what you're doing regarding creating greater awareness for caste systems and integrity between people. How do people go about finding out more about this? Well, I mean, we've got, uh, we've got a website, um, but then we've also, uh, you know, as an APPG, we're registered um, as, a, as an official group in Parliament. So you can search for APPG for British Hindus and the contact details will be there. Very well done. Uh, Jay Shatanga, it's been a pleasure and privilege talking with you. But I congratulate you once again on your um, very well-deserved uh, award and accolade. And may you uh, receive many, many more. And thank you for joining us here, right here, and wishing you uh, and your family and the community um, a very happy Diwali. Thank you, Tony. Happy Diwali to everyone. Thank you. Thank you.